Um, good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. <laughs> there we go. Uh, I'm very pleased and um, to be speaking um, to you on behalf of this amazing group, the 2019 Phi Theta Kappa New Jersey All State uh, Academic Team. Uh, today, as I stand before you all, I feel honored because I have to see all these great, amazing students and celebrate with them this day. Uh, in our MSR region, we say, oh yeah. Oh, so, yeah. <laughs> and uh, the great thing is that I know many of them. And uh, I know how hard working they are, uh, whether in their academics, whether in their leadership, uh, or whether in their communities. They are all the true image of what a Phi Theta Kappa is. All the thanks go actually to our prestigious society that brought, uh, brought us together. Um, Ted Lai, Professor Ted Lai, he, he, he mentioned where I came from and uh, the short of the story, but uh, I would like to go up the extent further. So I was born and raised in a small town in Eastern Algeria with my other four siblings. In my town, the school's dropout rate was very really high. I watched young dropout teenagers join gangs groups. I was lucky enough to have my mom at that time to encourage me with my education. And then, in the year 2000, life happened. My dad was diagnosed with a, a very a critical stage uh, hepatitis C back home. Uh, and I think uh, it is still true, uh, hold true for many uh, students here in this room. Uh, in our, uh, in our uh, part of the world, if you are the eldest son, the duties of taking care of the family will fall on you. So it happened the same for me. So the responsibilities of taking care of my family uh, business uh, has to fall on me and I have to stay in my father's store to support the family. I couldn't go to college because it was far from my hometown, at least two hours. So, and then going back and forth four hours, it didn't work it at that time. I have to support the family. I postponed my dream of going to college, and instead, I stayed working at my father's store. Uh, but the thing is that, as I stayed working at my father's store, I realized that money doesn't last. Uh, what really mattered at that time, I realized that was the knowledge that someone has to acquire. I knew that one day I would go to college, um, but it took me almost 16 years until I came here to the US to see my dream fulfilled. The good thing, I had a great passion that time for reading. I never stopped reading. I read anything comes across my mind, whether it is science, history, um, anything you name it. Uh, it was the only thing that kept, kept me busy and uh, helped me to keep my dream protected for the last 16 years. In 2014, I immigrated to the U.S. with my wife, Sarah, she's here. Uh, we brought with us a lot of money. Actually, not money. <laughs> <laughs> we brought with us a lot of dreams and hopes. A year later, uh, we welcomed our new member of the family, our uh, son, Ryan is right here. He's four years right now old. Uh, uh, it was and is still the joy of our life. Being a new immigrant to the U.S. is not an easy task, believe me. In the beginning, especially with two dependents, a wife and a baby son. My wife, that time, had to stay home taking care of my baby. We don't know anyone. I know only her. She knows only me. <laughs> so, we are not that very connected, we don't know anybody. Um, so, it was a bit of struggle for me to support the family. Um, and then we had a little discussion in uh, late 2015, and then uh, I encouraged her and motivated her to go to start uh, some ESL courses at our uh, Hudson County Community College School. Um, just. It didn't take her a year later on, she was already on her own, <coughs> secured a part-time job as a tutor, as a science and math tutor there. Um, uh, it was really great uh, news for me to hear that. Uh, and then, 
it's my turn now. Throughout her motivation and encouragement, in summer 2017, I had to make a tough decision. I was forced to choose between um, continue working a low income job or going to college. I choose to go to college. I choose college knowing in advance that the ride is going to be tough. But at the same time, I had a strong belief that it will be a rewarding journey at the end of the day. So I quit my job to become a full-time college student to fulfill my long life dream. Our great motivation in this journey is our baby son. We want him to grow up and have a role model in his life to, get, to be inspired. Although college life was a new experience for me, taking in consideration that I'm a first generation and a non-traditional student, I find my journey a good depiction of what Charles Darwin once said. Um, here is his words. It is not the most intellectual of the species that survives. It is not the strongest that survives. But the species that survives is the one that is able to adapt and adjust best to the changing environment which it finds itself. After I started college, it did not take me long to realize that becoming a college student was the best decision I have ever made. Indeed, dedication and persistence and love of learning pays off. The funny side of this journey, if somebody told me that I would one day go to college and in less one than year, I will be a Pearson Higher Education Scholar, I will be, um, well, It'll, the list is very long here. <laughs> an all USA academic team, uh, an all New Jersey state academic team, a pathway transfer scholar, a high scholar, um, the students of the year in my college, uh, and then become the chapter president of our chapter and the president of the English Honor Society and the vice president of two other clubs. <laughs> <laughs> I get accepted into an Ivy League school, I would say to this person, wait a minute, boy, that is really a good joke. <laughs> I would say, yes, that, that's really a good joke. But it happened. It all happened. And that is the reward of believing in yourself and the beauty of your dream. In fact, we learn a great deal from our failures, not from our success. Our success is just an inspiration for others to follow and a comfort for us as well. The 16 years I spent waiting for this day and my love for learning was the fuel of my achievements. However, I can say, say, say that proudly. This journey was not possible without the support and the guidance we found at Pi Theta Kappa. A place that I thought was a scam in the beginning. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> When, when, when my wife, Sarah, uh, uh, in spring 2017, she started before me, as you know, uh, she brought me the invitation and said, look, uh, I got invited to this society. I said, hey, <laughs> that's a scam. Why? Because I was very suspect, and I have no idea what is an honor society is. All what I learned is from Hollywood, those fraternities and uh, sororities, crazy stuff. <laughs> Phi Theta Kappa is without doubt the place that allowed me to grow as a leader. Not just that, but to be a team player. It gives us a chance to serve our community and aspire to be servant leaders. It allowed us to engage in a journey of fellowship with travel places and connect with people from all around the world. I have been privileged enough to interact with people from our great MSR region. Oh yeah. <laughs> school administrators, students, and faculty members. It is always a heart breaking to describe those vivid details and how amazing the last year and half has been for me. Every moment I spend at Phi Theta Kappa 
I had to learn something new along the way. Every member I met, you all are so much part of that tree. You are all will be with me no matter what. May you find the mountain that is right for you. Give and receive support along the way. Be patient and persevere through the ups and downs that you will face. Yeah, it's true. And importantly, learn to enjoy the journey that you are all about to embark upon. Always remember where you are going, but never forget where you came from. Never forget that humble beginning and how all it started. Thank you all for giving me this opportunity to share with you my story and uh, all the very best. And good evening.